Okay, well, welcome everyone. This is CS50 2012. Uh, my name is John, and I will be talking today about regular expressions. Um, regular expressions is, is a primarily a tool, but also uh, sometimes used in code actively um, to essentially match patterns in strings. So here's a, a web comic from XKCD. Um, in this comic, the, uh, the, there is a, a, a murder uh, mystery where the killer has followed somebody on vacation and uh, the protagonists have to uh, search through 200 megabytes of emails looking for an address. And they're about to give up when someone who knows regular expressions, presumably a superhero, swoops down and uh, writes some code and solves the murder mystery. So presumably that'll be something you will be empowered to do after this seminar. Um, so we're just going to provide a concise introduction to the language and give you enough uh, wherewithal to go after more resources on your own. Um, so regular expressions look basically like this. Um, so this is a regular expression in Ruby. It's not terribly uh, different across languages. Uh, we have uh, just on slashes to uh, begin and mark uh, the regular expression in Ruby. And uh, this is a regular expression to look for an email address pattern. So we see the, the, at the, the first bit uh, looks for any alphanumeric character. Um, that's because email addresses often have to start with an alphabetical character. Uh, and then any special character followed by the at symbol and then the same thing for a domain name. And then between two and four characters to look for the dot .com, dot .net, so on. Um, so that's another example of a regular expression. So regular expressions are protocols for finding patterns in text. They do comparisons, selections, and replacements. Um, so yet a third example is finding all the phone numbers ending in 54 in a directory. So before David rips up the CS50 directory, we could uh, search for a pattern where we have parentheses, uh, then three numbers, then n parentheses, three more numbers, a dash, two numbers, and then 54. And that would be essentially how we'd come up with a regular expression to search for that. So there are, uh, we've done some things in CS50 that are a little bit like regular expressions. So for example, um, in the dictionary.c file for the spell check problem set, uh, you may have used uh, fscanf to read in a, a word from the dictionary. And you can see the, uh, the percentage 45s is looking for a string of 45 characters. So it's, it's somewhat like a rudimentary regular expression. Um, and you can have any 45 uh, characters that fit the bill in there um, and pick those up. And then the, the second example um, in the most recent web programming problem set, in the distro code uh, for PHP, we actually do have uh, a simple regular expression. And this one is just simply looking to check uh, if the web page that is passed in matches either login or logout or register dot php and then re returning true or false based on that regular expression matching so when do you use regular expression why why are you here today um, so you don't want to use regular expression when there's something that does the job for you even more easily so xml and html are actually pretty tricky to write regular expressions for as we'll see in a little bit um, so there are dedicated uh, parsers for those languages. Um, you also need to be okay with the uh, trade-offs in accuracy frequently. If you are trying, so we, we saw a, a, a regular expression for an email address, um, but say you wanted a specific email address, right? And, and gradually the regular expression might become more complex and a, as it became more precise. Um, so that would, be, that would be one trade off. You have to be sure that you're okay making with a regular expression. If you know exactly what you're looking for, it might make more sense to put in the time and write um, a more effective parser. 
And finally, uh, there's a historical issue with the regularity of expressions and languages. Regular expressions are actually much more powerful than regular expressions per se in a formal sense. Um, so I, I don't want to go too far into the formal theory, um, but most languages that we, we code in actually aren't regular. And this is why regular expressions uh, sometimes aren't considered all that secure. So basically there's a Chomsky hierarchy for languages and regular expressions are built up using union concatenation and the, the clean star operation that we'll see in a few minutes. Um, so if, if you're interested in theory, there's quite a lot uh, going on there under the hood. Um, so a brief history, just for the context here, regular sets uh, were, came up in the 1950s. And then we had simple editors that incorporated regular expressions, just searching for strings. Um, grep, which is a command line tool, um, was uh, one of the first very popular tools that incorporated regular expressions in the 1960s. In the 80s, Perl was uh, built, uh, is, is a programming language that incorporates regular expressions very prominently. Um, and then more recently, we've had uh, Perl uh, compatible regular expression uh, protocols, uh, basically, in other languages that use much of the same syntax. Um, of course, the most important event was in 2008, uh, where there was the first National Regular Expressions Day, which I believe is June 1st, if you want to celebrate that. Um, again, just a little bit more theory here. Um, so there are a couple different ways of constructing regular expressions. Uh, one simple way is to build the expression uh, that you are going to run on the string interpret. Basically, build a little mini program that will analyze pieces of a string and see, oh, does this fit the regular expression or not? And then run that. Uh, so if you have a very small regular expression, this is probably the most efficient way to do it. Um, and then if you, and another option is to, uh, is to keep reconstructing the expression as you go, and that's the simulate possibility. Um, and the, these early attempts at regular ex expression algorithms were uh, relatively, uh, relatively simple and relatively fast, but didn't have a lot of flexibility. So to do even some of the things we're going to look at today, um, we had to do more complex re regular expression implementations that are potentially much slower. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, there's also a regular expression denial of service attack variety that, um, that exploit the, the potential for these newer implementations of regular expressions to become very complex. Um, and in, in much the same sense that we saw buffer overflow attacks, you have attacks that work by uh, making recursive loops that overrun the capacity of memory. Um, and by the way, regexin is one of the official plurals of regular expressions by analogy to oxen in the Anglo-Saxon. Um, okay, so the Python library. Um, many of you uh, here in person have Macs, uh, so you can actually pull this up on your screen. Uh, regular expressions are built into Python. Um, and so Python is preloaded on Macs and also available online at this link. Um, so if you are watching, you can pause and make sure you have Python uh, as we play around here. Um, there's a manual online. So, so if you just type Python into your computer, you'll see that the version comes up in the terminal. Uh, so I, I provided a link to the manual for version 2 of Python, um, as well as a cheat sheet. There is a version 3 of Python, uh, but your your Mac doesn't necessarily come with that preloaded. So not terribly different. OK, so some, some basics of using regular expressions in Python. Um, so here I uh, used a very simple expression. Uh, I, so I, I, I did Python import re um, and then took the result of re.search. And the search takes two arguments. The first is the regular expression. And the second is the text or string you want to analyze. And then I printed out the result.group. 
Um, so these are the two basic functions we're going to see today um, in learning about regular expressions. So just breaking down this regular expression here, uh, h and then slash w uh, and then m. So slash w just accepts any alphabetical character in there. So here we're looking for an h and then another alphabetical character and then an m. So here that would match ham in Abraham Lincoln and ham sandwiches. This is a result of that group. Um, another thing that we can do is use R before strings of text in Python. So I guess I'll go ahead and pull that up here. Python import RE. Um, and if I were to do the same thing, let's say text is uh, Abraham, uh, let's zoom in. There we go. Text is Abraham eats ham. Um, okay, and then uh, result equals re dot search, and then our expression can be h, and then I'll do dot m. So dot just takes any character that's not a new line, including numbers, uh, percentage signs, anything like that, and then text. Boom, and then result dot group. There, yeah. So that's that's just how to implement basic uh, functionality here. Uh, if if we had a text string that uh, that crazy text uh, included, say, lots of backslashes and strings inside. Um, and things that could look like escape sequences, then we'd probably want to use the raw text input to make sure that's accepted. Um, and that just looks like uh, looks like that. So if we were looking for each of them in there, we, sh we shouldn't find anything. Um, but that's how you would implement it. Just before the string of the regular expression, you put the letter R. Um, OK. So. Let's keep going. All right, so let's look at um, a couple repetitive patterns here. Um, so one thing that you want to do is repeat things uh, as you, you're searching through text. Um, so to do A followed by any number of B, you do A, B, asterisk. And then there are a series of other rules, too. And you can look all of these up. I'll just run through some of the most uh, commonly used ones. Uh, so AB plus is A followed by any N greater than zero of B. Uh, AB question mark is A followed by zero or one of B. Uh, AB of, of curly brace N uh, uncurly brace is A followed by N of B. And then so on. If you have two numbers in the curly braces, you're specifying a range uh, that can be possibly matched. Uh, so. We'll, we'll we'll look more at some a couple of repetitive patterns in a minute. Um, so 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 two things to keep in mind when using these uh, pattern matching uh, tools here. So say we want so so say we want to look at uh, the H dot M of Abraham Lincoln makes ham sandwiches. So I changed Abraham Lincoln's name to Abraham, um, and now. We're, we're looking for what's returned by this search function. And it only returns hem in this case. Uh, and it, it does that because search just naturally takes the leftmost uh, queue. And all regular expressions, uh, unless you specify otherwise, will do that. If we wanted to find all, there is a function for that, find all. Um, so that could just look like uh, uh, all equals re dot find all um, of h dot m and then the text and then uh, all dot group do, 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 do. all all produces both ham and ham in this case the, both of the strings in Abraham each ham uh, so that's another option. Um, great. So the, the, the other thing to keep in mind is that 
uh, regular expressions uh, take the largest intuitively. So let's look at this example. Um, so we did the, that leftmost search here. And then I attempted a largest search using the uh, clean star operator. So for Abraham Lincoln makes ham sandwiches. And I only got back M as a result. The reason th for that mistake was uh, that I could have taken any number of H's because I didn't specify anything to go in between H and M. So the only example there that had M, the only examples there with M in it uh, and any number of H's were just the string M. Then I tried it again. I said, okay, let's get the actual largest group here. And then I did H dot clean star M. So that just returns any number of characters between H and M. And if you're just starting out and thinking, oh, okay, well, this will, this will get me hem, it actually takes everything from uh, the H in Abraham Lincoln all the way up to the end of ham. So it's greedy. It sees H, all this other text, M. And that's what it, that's what it takes in. Um, so this is a particularly uh, egregious it, it, this is a, a feature. We, we can also specify for it not to be greedy using other functions. Um, but this is something we have to keep in mind, especially uh, when looking at H HTML text, which is one reason that uh, regular expressions are difficult for HTML. Um, because if you have an HTML open tag and then lots of stuff in the middle and then some other HTML close tag much later in the program, you've just eaten up a lot of your of your uh, HTML code, possibly by mistake. All right, um, so more special characters. Uh, like many other languages, we escape using the slash. So, so we, we can use the dot to specify any character except for a new line. We can use the escape W to specify any alphabetical character. And by analogy, escape D for any integer uh, numerical character. Um, we can specify, we can use brackets to specify related expressions. So this would accept A, B, or C. And we can also specify uh, or options uh, for either A or B. So for example, if we were looking for multiple uh, possibilities in brackets, we could use the or operator. As in, um, so let's go back to, uh, this example here, and now let's take, let's go back to this example here, and then take uh, A, E. So this should return, this I guess this is still Abraham. So this, if we do all, great. So let's, uh, let's update the text here. Abraham eats ham while hemming his, while hemming, great. Um, all, great, so now we get ham, ham, and hem, uh, while hemming, uh, while Humming to him, or humming to hem him. Great. Um, same thing. Now all returns still just ham, ham, and hem without picking up on the hum with the hem. Great. Uh, so, what if we wanted to look at either that? So, so we could also do. Um, a him or uh, do 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 do. Well, we'll come we'll come back to that. Okay, so all right, in positions, so you can also uh, use the uh, caret or the dollar sign to specify that you're looking for something at the start or the end of a string. Um, or the start or end of a word is one way to use that. Um, okay, so let's play around with a slightly larger block of text. 
Um, so let's say this row here, this, this statement here, the power of regular expressions is that they can specify patterns, not just fixed characters. Um, so let's make, let's call this block. Doo -doo. Equals. Then we'll read all of that in. And then have uh, make all equal So what, is, what are some things we could search for in here profitably? Could look for the expression ear. Um, not very interesting. How about that? Let's see what happens. Oh, I gave a problem. So any number of things before RE and all. That should return everything from the beginning up to all E, perhaps a couple times. Um, and then here we have the power of regular expressions is that they can specify patterns, not just characters. Here are so all the way up to the final R E. It started with the leftmost, and it was greedy. Um, let's see what else could we look for. I guess one one thing uh, if you were interested in looking for the pronouns she and he. You could check for s being equal to 0 or 1, and then the expression he. And that's probably not going to return. Oh, I guess it returned he, because there we're looking at the power that they here are. Um, let's try specifying that this has to come at the start of something. Let's see if that drops off. So we can do that. And there we don't get anything because she and he don't occur in this in this phrase. Um, great. Okay, so back to the cat here. So complex pattern which is holding the brain. So that's why uh, that's why we use regular expressions to avoid these issues. So here are some other useful modes um, you can play around with. We looked at search today, um, but you can also use match, split, find all, and groups. So other cool things you can do with regular expressions besides just looking for patterns is taking the pattern and holding, holding all the matches as variables and then using those in your code later on. Uh, that can be quite helpful. Other things might be counting. So we can count the number of instances uh, of a regular expression pattern, and that's what we can use groups for, uh, and other modes as well are also possible. Uh, so I just want to talk a little bit more about other ways you can use regular expressions. Uh, so one uh, more advanced application is in fuzzy matching. So if you are looking through a text for the expression Julius Caesar, and you see either Gaius Julius Caesar or the name Julius Caesar in other languages, then you might also want to assign some weight to those va values. And if it's close enough, if it crosses a certain threshold, then you want to be able to accept Julius Caesar. So there are a couple different uh, uh, implementations for that in C in, uh, and in a few other languages as well. Um, here are some other tools, uh, regexpal, uh, a handy little app online to check if your regular expressions are composed correctly. There are also uh, standalone tools that you can run uh, from your desktop, uh, like UltraPico, and as well as just cookbooks. So if you're doing a project that involves a ton of regular expressions, this is probably the place to go outside the scope of today. Um, and then just to give you uh, a, a sense of, of how common it is, there's uh, grep and Unix. Uh, Perl has it built in. In C, there is PCRE uh, for C. And then uh, all these other languages also have regular expression packages that operate with essentially the same syntax we got a taste of today, PHP, Java, Ruby, so on. Um, Google, Google Code Search is actually worth mentioning. It's one of the 
uh, relatively few applications out there that allows the public to access this database using regular expressions. So if you look on Google Code Search, you can find code um, if you're looking for an instance of how a function might be used. You can use a regular expression to find that function being used in all sorts of different cases. You could look for f write, and then you could look for the flag um, of, of write or read if you wanted an example of f write being used in that, in that case. Um, so same thing there. And here are some references. Uh, this will be available online as well. So going forwards, if you want to look at Python, GREP, Perl, if you just want to get some inspiration, or if you want to look more at the theory, uh, here are some good jumping off places. Thank you very much.